शक्ति values workshop on stability i hope i'm not cutting off let me know if i am stopping the music is a good idea so as always before we begin let's ponder on this value stability asking yourself this question looking at my life in the past have i really been stable among very unstable circumstances each one will have a different answer what is it to remain stable amidst chaos is it really a very difficult value to develop or i need practice to develop that what is this true inner stability and how can i really inculcate that so that it becomes a part of my original being so let's try to from today's workshop look at in this aspect and enhance our own stability so with this i'm sure we are having quite a few people now yes but it's more than oh that's good it's a good start normally we have less at this time but we have crossed 60 so far so let's move on today let me again introduce our first let me first welcome all the facilitators we have with us sister harpreet joining from west coast of canada and sister shruti joining from arizona so welcome both of you and we have a again tireless team of interpreters and recorders and a big thank you to all of you the participants who have joined on time so today let me just go further as we go this is our list which we have covered we are on 81 already now and can you oh just hang on sorry I'm go behind <laughs> sorry can you just recognize who this person was i showed you if someone can write in the chat box or unmute and speak so today's ice breaker video is a bit unique today i'll be playing this video for you all say around 5 to 7 minutes just to give you a glimpse of two very stable minds in the world all of you would agree we know dadi janki very well and the other one is yuri geller the one whom you saw i showed you a minute ago so both of these are considered to be very stable and i am not saying that scientifically they have been proven and we'll see this small video of how scientists have labeled them as stable minds and what sort of eeg recordings electroencephalography recordings they have really documented in that way and this is very much happening at our brahma kumaris oxford retreat center so let's see what this video has to show i'll just play it in bits and pieces so please bear with me i'll show you the relevant bits so i'll be cutting off a bit fast i was very excited when i was asked to uh, come along and uh look at or possibly produce some experiments which could look at how daddy's brain functions and yuri's brain function how they may function together and the reason for this is that i have an interest in meditation and have done a number of scientific studies over Uh, about 10 15 years i'm also interested in altered states of consciousness so if you were given this opportunity what would you say <laughs> you say yeah go for it yuri geller and daddy jackson yeah so i did but i tell some of my friends i might work with yuri geller they say ah no way i say he's a nice guy I said yeah we know that but the ones who had worked with him said don't work with him <laughs> but i quite like to and they said he'd ruin your equipment no way i said <laughs> no way not my equipment it's good and so um we set about two sets of experiments the first set was to was using the idea of healers and healees now if you're a healer and you put uh, have electrodes put on your head 
and measure your brain waves. And there's somebody who's being healed, the healy. And as they pass their hands over the healy, and you measure the healy's brain waves, then there are a number of studies which show that at the moment of this transaction, the brain waves of the healer and the healy are brought into some form of synchrony. So, if Daddy Janky and Yuri Geller came into some sort of emotional contact, could we see a synchrony of their brain waves? So that's the first experiment. And when you look at the results of this, we're going to look at the frequency profile on the left and right hemisphere of Daddy's brain, and the frequency profile on the left and right hemisphere. We've got hemisphere. the videos on behind of, of uh, uh, some yes. of the experiments to show you all in fact what did happen when Yuri visited Daddy at the Oxford Retreat Centre of the Brahma Kumaris. What's happening here? And not a thing works. Not a thing. <laughs> Hours we were there. <laughs> <laughs> um, goodness knows why. Everybody said that it was Yuri. What it was, I don't know. It didn't work. So we had to pack up, go away, and come back and do it again. And uh, we'll see that from the pattern of the brain waves. Now, you can, if you look at the screens, you can see that's Daddy's left hemisphere, right hemisphere. And now you get the frequencies, the high frequencies and the lower frequencies going down, beta, alpha, theta, and delta. And Yuri's picture is on the right there. You can see that they um, uh, aren't, in fact, synchronous altogether. Now they had an emotional transference. They uh, related to each other in silence, linking of the minds. And then we uh, looked at the patterns which were produced. And if you do that, you'll see that, to begin with, um, they were rather dissimilar. So, this, the experiment went through an intense linking over a period of time. Now, if you look at that pattern, uh, Yuri's, remember, on the right, Daddy's on the left, you can see that uh, Daddy's two hemispheres are more similar than Yuri's. Samples from the middle of the recording, and now you can see something quite different. If you look at Daddy's uh, picture, you can see that the two hemispheres are very similar. And note the power, the fast power and the slow power. It's exactly what's reported in meditative states. And see Yuri's beginning to be dragged in to a similar pattern to Daddy's. Now at the end of the experiment, you see a lot of slow power there with a very similar pattern from both of them. Yes, so wonderful. So a lot of scientific stuff to be shown to you all today. Uh, we won't be taking any sharings, but if you all want to say anything in the chat box, so just to tell you all that uh, in short, the summary was that Dadi Janki, a regular meditator, the waves were very stable. Initially, Yuri's waves weren't very stable, but there was emotional transference. That's what uh, the scientists were saying. And then Dadi Janki's meditation, meditative vibrations of stability were being transferred to Yuri Geller. And Yuri's brain waves were also getting stable as, as we go. So this is the power of meditation. And that's what we are really wanting, I wanted to share this video with you all. I wanted to show some sense rather than going into some animation thing and really show you the scientific proof of how meditation can develop stability. So I think I'll just uh, stop sharing. I've already stopped sharing. So with this, it's time now. And if anyone has a quick comment, we have many participants today. I'm quite surprised actually. So if you all have anything to comment in the chat box, you all can do that. Otherwise we'll move on to the first activity directly. And it's over to Sister Harpreet. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manoz. So that was a great video to watch and see how the mind works. And uh, so today you're going to explore on the stability. It's very important a value for all of us to focus on that. So uh, 
I personally is uh, like this value very much is uh, because uh, I have used many times as uh, myself in the personal life. Recently, it's just uh, with my mother passing away is uh, how you can use this value. So we are going to explore on that. So what is the advantage of the stability? So all of us, we are going to focus on that is going to take a minute and we are going to uh, check that ourselves. We're going to reflect on the instant uh, from your life where you remained stable despite the situation being chaotic. So let's take a minute and jot down all the advantages of being stable. So when you're stable, how that can help you to be making the decisions with the calm mind and uh, how you can handle the situation better. So let's take a one moment and uh, write that down. got hold of your thoughts and uh, how you have used this uh, value. Great. So you can write it down in the chat. Sorry, I have some messages came up on the screen. And uh, so there's beautiful sharings already there. So be, become detached from the situation. Sister Balvinder Singh can see the big picture clearly, can convert your attention's energy focus towards its solution. Very nice. And Dr. Manoza saying is saying is improve the decision-making uh, capacity. So when the past situation appears again and reflect sadness or anger, it uh, was possible to release that uh, drama is happening and there is a way to solve and not run away. That's really nice. So then we have somebody sharing is a uh, can foresight. Uh, okay, yeah, they can give us the site, can develop uh, more tolerance. The stability, we can come over all the confusions. And uh, yeah, so you can trust yourself. You may use all your powers and authority. You don't uh, drift away. You're already, you're ready to work accurately. So stability is really good. That way we can, uh, all that is wonderful. Sharing is that, sharing. So Kavita is sharing as being stable, keeps the mind clear and make accurate decisions. So that's why it's really important to have this uh, value. So when we have that stability is uh, lots of things can be done with the calmness and we can get hold of our, that inner peace and happiness and all that is comes with this value as well. So Michael saying is means you know how to manage yourself. Yeah, so if anybody wants to unmute yourself and you want to orally share, that is welcome as well. We would love to hear from you. Anybody? And uh, so more flexibility and superior self-awareness here they're saying comes 
And then we have a Roy is uh, saying is, um, lost my screen here, give me one minute. <laughs> Yeah, lots of good sharing. So anybody wants to unmute and share? I think today say we have, uh, sorry to interrupt, we have broken the record. We are more than 100 already now. So many people want this value of stability. So maybe <laughs> please people could share. There are many people. Thank you. Sorry, go ahead, whoever was speaking. No problem. Yeah. No, I say if you have stability, it means it's close to maturity. Mm, very good. Stability is close to maturity, very nice. And Dr. Anu is saying is feel calm and joyful, true. Because stability can bring lots of other great values. Anybody else like to share? We would love to hear from you. Okay, shall I? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so for me, it is like, uh, okay, right, on a daily basis, or sometimes you are, uh, you have to face situation wherein you are, you have to face something, a thought or word or an action, which is running on a critically low level of charge. Okay, so in such cases, uh, for me, the stability comes like, I have to create a thought, which has to either nullify that effect, or neutralize or that effect, or divert it to, or elevate it to a positive direction. So if you don't do that, we and we just be detached of source, it doesn't work for me. So creating a thought which counters that, that works and that helps in stability. Hmm. Well said. So we have to find our own methods, what works for in that situation. That's well said. Thank you. Anybody else like to share? Om Shanti, for me, more flexibility and superior self-awareness. Very nice, very nice, Hirdaya, yes. Who else like to share? Anybody else? Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Yada se apne aap ko detach kar paate hai, matlab hum har cheez, har cheez se, har, har, situation is okay so being a detached i think she's saying is it it's hard to hear because breaking out so being a detached is uh you can handle the situation well is a loss we have learned through these values. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else can take a couple more sharings. So you can have in the chat or you can open the mic. We encourage you to maybe speak. So it's a good value. So we had a, yes. Yes, Gita. Yeah. Let me stability the value is that calmness of mind or not getting disturbed or frightened because situations can change without any warnings mm. so if we have witness conscious all the time and our mind is calm then we can take the proper decisions mm. so the calmness brings the proper decision very nice Sinam, go ahead you can share no, thank you. Um, yes, um, it's a revelation, actually, um, many years of BK knowledge. It is really important, the first step in the first step, to be awake and to be aware that this is all um, a drama. And mm -hmm. when often there is past karma coming up, past sanskars, and I experience that sadly. And whenever something happens, this knowledge helps me. Um, to know what is happening and to also know how to react um, or not to act. Um, yeah, so being awake is the first and the most important um, step. Thank you. Very important, yes. So when we are aware, then we can uh, find the solution. So that is well said. Thank you. Anybody else like to share? Um, Om Shanti. Yes. Go ahead, Lata. 
Uh, uh, yeah, Om Shanti. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, when I'm stable, that I'm able to reflect on the other side of the situation, like the other side of the problem, for instance. Uh, when everybody is focusing on the problem, when I'm stable, I can see the other perspective that, okay, if there is anything good in this, or if uh, uh, what is the other way I can deal with the situation? Mm. Only if I'm stable rather than saying that why this has happened or uh, how can we solve the problem so yeah thank right. you so instead of questioning so you can find the solutions thank you uh, yes yeah thank you yeah I'm Shanti. okay anybody else like to share okay we have a good sharing thank you whoever have shared we can take maybe one last sharing Anybody? It's a good value. When we share that is the more we can use that, that ourselves. I think it gets stored in our own subconscious mind. That's what I feel when we share and helps others as well. So anybody like to share? Otherwise, we will share what we haven't shared. Deepak, why can share that uh, screen? Deepak, why? Thank you. Oh yeah, we got a good book of value. So become detached from the situation, can see the big picture clearly, can convert your attentions towards in solutions and improve the decision-making capacity, make one see other side of situation and bring solutions. So you trust yourself, you may use all your powers and authority you don't drift away, you are ready uh, to share that is uh, uh, ready to work uh, accurately. When a past situation appears again, reflections, uh, reflecting sadness or anger, it was possible to release that drama is happening and there is a way solve and uh, not run away. So great sharings, lots of uh, wonderful things. And it seems like it's uh, Deepak Vai have caught everything. So over, um, come all this confusions can develop more tolerance being stable keeps the mind clear and make accurate decisions so stability means you know how to manage yourself calmness of mind being aware and awake can uh, give you that foresight can have that foresight more uh, flexibility and the superior self-awareness great sharings everybody so test papers are able uh, are there to check the self again and again until becoming stable. Remind yourself this came to strengthen me and it will pass soon. So having a more peace, stability is close to maturity. Stability makes one feel calm and joyful. Wonderful sharings, everybody. Thank you so much. Is uh, Now I pass back to Dr. Manoz is, uh, for the meditation experience. Thank you. Thank you all of you for being so stable and I'm pleasantly surprised we have 115 participants and I don't know how many of them are new here. So it's a kind request if you all want to just share your WhatsApp numbers and your email addresses in the chat box so you can keep, uh, I mean, we can keep you informed about the future workshops and the series episodes as well. So kindly do that in the chat box and you can address that to Sister Vidhi or Sister Anu or to everyone if you feel comfortable. Okay, so let's move ahead. We are actually all before time today on stability because we have a stable mind. Let's dive deep into the stability mode in the meditation before we go on to Sister Shruti for the action planning activity. So let's try again with some music and hope I'm not cutting off still as well. Let me know if I am. Okay, so let's begin. Sit back, relax. And as you can see the beautiful image in front of you, the waves, the ripples in the water, and the pebbles, very stable on top of that. 
So similarly, try to stabilize your consciousness. In the being aspect. I am the beautiful spiritual being that I am. A consciousness, a being of light that I am. And the moment I stabilize myself in this subtle consciousness, automatically <clears throat> my mind starts slowing down. My thoughts start becoming more and more subtle. And this is what is called to practice being the soul conscious stage. The more and more I go into the depth of this stage, the more and more stable I feel. I, the beautiful spiritual being, And in this totally subtle and spiritual consciousness, <clears throat> let me take the second step and connect myself to the ocean of stability. The Supreme Being The divine being, is the ocean of stability, ocean of peace. And visualize that pure being on the top of your head. See that you are under the stable canopy of the Supreme Being. As you draw your attention more and more towards that ocean of stability, you start feeling it. You enter such a domain. You started liking it. I, the stable being, peaceful being of light, connected to the ocean of stability. And with this connection, I am now ready to face obstacles and challenges in life as they may come. And facing them with stability and peace. So with this, I would now request Sister Shruti to take us into the next exercise. Over to you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, now that we have experienced stability, 
discussed on the many advantages of being stable in our lives, we also recognize that not every situation, um, not in every situation are we able to display that level of stability or certainly not uh, remain as stable as we would like to remain. So in this next portion of the action planning, what we will do is focus, take a few minutes and really think about what are some of the additional ways by which I can uh, introduce or enhance the stability of the mind? Are there ways, are there methods, are there reminders I can create in the day, in my life, to continue to remain stable or enhance my current stability? So again, a few minutes to just reflect, and then we'll come back and share. So would somebody like to get us started? Some ways by which I can continue to enhance my stability. Oh. Thank you, Sister Rana. Uh, the unmute has been disabled uh, for the participants. Uh, Anuben, can you help with that? Thank you, the host. Sorry. Okay. Can we try now? You're being able to unmute. Okay, great. Would anybody like to get us started? Do I hear somebody? I'm Shanti. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, so. The stability is proportional to the to be in the self awareness and awareness of Baba. Okay. Okay. Shall I? So you, I I think what you're saying is it's all it, it's more about self awareness. So the more aware I can remain during the day, the more that would help me enhance my stability. Thank you. Somebody else? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sarena? Yeah. Go ahead, please. Yeah, and like I said earlier, uh, the creating a positive thought. Okay, so whenever uh, somebody calls us for help, 
since inception until now, the burning question that comes from them is, you know, but they did this or that. So how can we create good thoughts for them? You know, it's just not for, it just doesn't come out. So, okay, so then we have to train them for, uh, you know, creating this way and tell them, okay, there's the benefits of it. So when we help others, it's like affirming for ourselves. Okay, so we are telling others, so we have to do it ourselves and we have to make it a practice to create those positive thoughts so that we can be stable and we can help others more. Very nice. So positive thoughts for ourselves as well as reminding others. Thank you. Uh, yes, Lata, please go ahead. I think that, uh, uh, like, personally, I feel that when we have consistency, mm -hmm. um, consistency and uh, consistency in doing the actions and thoughts, which uh, which help me to remain stable. So sometimes we actually know that this thing is helping me, but there is no consistency. Or sometimes we forget because when we are in a chaotic situation or when we are in unstable scenario, so we forget. So we need to have the consistency or I would say in a better way that a, a, like daily good habits. So daily good habits will help me to remain consistent and it will help me to remain stable and uh, in the situations when I need to be stable the most like Karina. the meditation or maybe having the positive affirmations written around me or maybe having a bit small piece of paper or a book which I read and immediately I can calm myself down and attain a stage of stable and maturity very nice it's Thank a consistency I, I like that word consistency and then having those reminders whether it's daily thoughts affirmations books thank you uh, Senam, would you like to go ahead? Yes, oh. um, ex experiencing that um, ignoring and running away does not really help when the situation comes. And um, even worse, a problem um, which is not solved can come back, and back again. Um, so the only uh, solution really is to solve the problem by it's it's this is that with the powers that we have um the techniques that we learn is the best thing that we can use and utilize and i mean it is good to be aware and uh, to be awakened in that so um it is really important to see what is happening and to solve it because it can come back again and again thank you very nice thank you uh yes melanie would you like to go ahead uh, yes. Uh, good morning. Um, for me, it would be having uh, good support. That would be it. And what do you mean by good support? Would you like to elaborate? Like who are your sources of support um, perhaps? Friends. Friends that are really, really spiritual. And Very nice. they morally. But for me, uh, good friends that I can reach or that also they reach me, that they tell me, oh, we miss you. That, oh, so then I, I feel that I am giving, that I am giving something good, that I am, uh, and then at the same time, I receive them from them, the support when I need. Um, very for nice. Yeah. To feel yeah. Very nice. No, certainly sources of support are important. Thank you. Anybody else? I see a couple more unmutes. Would anybody else Om, like to Om go? Shanti, DDT. Om Shanti, Vajabhai, please go ahead. My dear brothers and sisters, please accept greetings of love, peace, happiness, and happy Lori. Lori means give your problems to Hari. Lo Hari. Hari ko problem de do. It mm -hmm. means when you are unstable, when you are in a problem, remember, there is only one supreme power which can make you stable. No other thing, no other remembrance can make you stable and calm in these conditions when there are problems. So make a habit of being stable all the time by remembrance of God, remembrance of supreme. So you will remain stable because supreme says, it is a Kalyankari drama. This drama is wonderful. So whatever happens, 
something good is going to come for you. If that is a firm determination in your mind, God's remembrance will make you stable in any situation. Om Shanti. Thank you, Vijay Bhai. Happy glory to you as well. And yes, so having that faith and giving that problems to God and believing that everything will be beneficial. Um, there are a couple of chat messages, but yes, please go ahead, Ranju. Yeah, I think a, a solid foundation. Okay. Stability. If you think about tall buildings and trees, tall trees, they have to have a very solid foundation to spread the, to, to, to evenly support the height of, of where we're going. And we've got the four pillars, which are is the initial foundation. Om Shanti. Very nice. So the foundations, and I'm, I think, I'm, and I'm, I'm assuming you're referring to the foundations of spiritual life and making sure that Om those Shanti. foundations that we are taught in Brahma Kumaris are stable. Thank you. Yes, go ahead, Ranju. Om Shanti. सब सबसे बड़ा मैंने सीखा स्थिरता हम जिनसे सीख रहे हैं डॉक्टर बड़ाच वो ये उनसे ये सीखा और हमेशा ये अप्लाई किया कि हमेशा ऊपर बाबा के साथ रहो और जब काम करना है तभी आप नीचे हो सबसे बड़ी स्थिरता मुझे ये इसी से महसूस हुई वाइन जो है स्थिर रहता है थैंक यू सो जस्ट टू ट्रांसलेट uh what, what ranju is saying is that what she learned in the spiritual practice is to keep your awareness elevated and only come down or bring your awareness to this uh, to this dimension of uh, action only when it's needed otherwise keep your awareness elevated and try to stay in a higher dimension higher ele elevation of existence or higher dimension of existence okay i'm shanti uh, Yes. Okay. Uh, I will. I will say it can be many, many reasons why I go into instability or a, a possibility to go into instability. So I will say first of all, obviously we have a spiritual knowledge which allow us to uh, to understand which type of situation which may create instability, and and then I may think and understand which power. Uh, I have to use, I mean, using the knowledge and using the power will allow me, in fact, to, to have my own thought in my mind, which are positive and, and uh, knowledgeful thought. And that in itself is create the inner stability, you know. So stability is when you are able to maintain thought which are positive, uh, uh, knowledgeful of wisdom, of power. I mean, something good in your mind, whatever the situation is then uh, the situation can be a turmoil or whatever it is, or very terrible or whatever, but you still think good thought in your mind. So you, so you are not influenced. The, the outside situation doesn't enter your mind because your mind is busy with some good thought. Okay. okay. Very nice. Thank you. So we're diving deeper uh, with uh, Brother um, Michael about having those positive thoughts and how do you have those positive thoughts is with wisdom with the spiritual knowledge and understanding which power to use and we've had a whole series on the eight powers that are very much a part of the brahma kumari's teaching i think we are almost at time so i'm just going to go through some of the a few selected chat messages um if i go right back um Again, from Brother Michael, having balance between introspection, solitude, and social life, remain active and busy, but keep on learning to use your mm -hmm. intellect to make it strong. Um, Mr. Balvinder says, self-reminder daily that I am stable, all, I'm a stable being already connected to the ocean of stability, meaning the divine, increasing self-awareness under the guidance of one source, again, the divine. Staying connected with the self and the highest self, 
and remind, remembering, revising, reflecting all the tips and techniques and experiences of noble personalities like Dadi like Dadi Ji. Uh, Sanam says Baba has given us, or God has given us, the jewels to experiment with all those powers. That's why all problems are an opportunity to improve. Well, Vindavar again says, Lori, take away all my problems, Hari. Awesome reminder. Anu says about being aware of my thoughts and shifting quickly any negative thoughts and feelings into positive by being aware that I am a soul, child of God, here to experience life and share only the good. I think with that, uh, uh, Deepak Bhai, if you want to just quickly flash the slide before I hand it back to uh, Manoj Bhai. Thank you. We had lovely sharings and all of this would be received by you. So again, just a summary of being aware of my thoughts. Stability is proportional to self-awareness, having the balance throughout, positive thoughts, and reminding others to be positive, consistent daily good habits, uh, focusing on spiritual powers, having good support in life, self-daily reminders. And I think with that, I can pass it back to you, Manoj Pai. Okay, thank you. Wonderful. So... And thank you, Vijay Bhai, sir, for reminding us this two auspicious days in the Indian calendar are celebrated. And it has a lot of spiritual significance. First of all, 13th and 14th Jan are those days, according to the calendar in January, where the sun, I don't know exact details, but I am just trying to figure out how to say it to you all. So the sun comes into the northern hemisphere somehow, and it's called Uttarayan in Hindi. But in short, the days start becoming. Uh, longer. The chill also goes up, but now that since the days have started becoming longer, so there is more brightness in the days and people feel much more better coming out of the sad, depressive days of de December when on 21st December, where you have the smallest day and the largest or the longest night. So if you can look at this angel here, we have Jayanti Didi, so stable she is. She, she speaks also with so much of sweetness, softness, and stability. So let me just share with you what she had to say. So she spoke first about that the basis of stability is faith. We call it in Hindi Nishche. And here at Brahma Kumaris, the teachings, we are taught faith in four aspects. First, faith in the self. Second, faith in the supreme being. Third is faith in the spiritual family where you belong to. And thirdly, most important, which is quite difficult, is faith in the drama, the divine drama, what we say that whatever is happening is happening absolutely for my benevolence and it's beneficial. So she said that if we hold the Almighty's hands, we'll reach our destination. And what's our destination? It's a stage where we have settled all our karmic accounts. And if I can just add one more thing here, it's called <clears throat> the karma teeth stage. It's a very high stage where you are not affected by whatever is happening in your life, either good or bad, you're very stable, you're balanced, you neither are up and about when someone is praising you, and neither are you feeling very low when things are not the way they are supposed to be. She mentioned here about global warming because things are really changing at a very fast pace in the outside world on the external aspect. Natural calamities, disasters, all that happening. So in all these calamities, I need to really maintain my faith, as I said, in those four aspects. And she said, instability comes when I start questioning, when these questions, doubts, they come into our intellects. And also we are taught here that if you ask why, what, where, when, you have really opened a big door of uh, a lot of obstacles coming into your life. So let's put a full stop. Let's not think why this has happened, let's fly. That's what we are taught here. We said that let us try to look at this inner light, which we are really doing the meditation also. We were trying to discover that because I'm the shining bright point of light and I've identified myself with this big body. And here is what the basis of Raj Yoga is, that the most important thing is to identify yourself. And it's not something which I'm imagining, no, it's my reality that I am 
the being. I am the tiny being, point of light. And once I realize that, then as you all discussed, practicing detachment and all that becomes quite easy. <clears throat> Didi mentioned, she went on to mention here that even this body is not mine. Nothing is really mine. <clears throat> even this body I have been given as a loan to settle my karmic accounts. I am an immortal energy. She went on to speak about fear, that if I have fear, there'll always be instability. So let's try to get rid of this fear. And the moment I create again, this consciousness of I being the soul, all fear vanishes. And also she said, try to develop this <clears throat> beautiful relationship with the divine. All sorts of relationships we are taught here, that he's your parent, eternal parent, God, the divine energy. <clears throat> he's your friend, he's your guide, he's your philosopher, he's your guru, he's your teacher. <clears throat> he can be your spouse, husband of wife, whatever you want to, <laughs> in whatever way you want to have that thing with him. So once I sort of develop this technique <clears throat> of cultivating all the different relationships with that divine being, it really gives me a lot of strength and fear goes off and I remain stable. That's the correlation. I think the last activity which Sister Shruti took us into was how to enhance the methods. According to Didi, how to increase stability is deepening this relationship, which I just spoke a minute ago. And again, in this deepening, faith. Faith is the most important factor which helps me in improving on this. And if I can develop, again, we have a slogan in Brahma Kumari is called one strength, one support. In Hindi, we call ek bal, ek bharosa. So if I can develop on that, and also at the same time, have faith in my alokic spiritual family, a belongingness comes into it, and then I don't have to fear anything. Because sometimes we really lose faith in the spiritual family. Something untoward happens. And I say, oh, I have seen the logic world and now here also in the spiritual world, same thing is happening. No, so let me not just look at the weaknesses of anyone or the misdoings or misgivings of anyone. Let me look at the positive aspect as Sister Rena was also sharing. Try to convert that negative into positive. So, and I like this, the last point which I have highlighted that just as God has faith in me that has made me stable, can I have faith in others as well? Again, the same thing, faith in the spiritual family. So that my stability and faith in them gives them stability as well. Because it's a vibration. This is again we call serving through the vibrations, mansa seva. I'll cover that in the next slide as well. So if I change my attitude, my vritti towards others, despite whatever wrong they have done, which I feel is wrong, they won't feel it's wrong, but I feel it's not right what they have done. Let me still continue to have faith in them because they are a part of my family. That will, if I can just request DK Patel to please mute yourself, thank you. And then they are able to move through because these vibrations towards them, if I change, that will give them stability. Faith will give them stability and they can move on further. Moving further is, Didi mentioned about how to practice Mansa Seva. I had asked a question also, I'll cover that, that what is the um, right way to do that? So the right way she mentioned was send positive vibrations through the mind, but don't, when you sit in meditation, say for 30 minutes or one hour, for the first few minutes, just tell the divine being whom we lovingly call Baba, that today this is what you feel that that other soul should be receiving, and that's it. And then you connect yourself with the divine. Don't keep remembering that soul again and again in the meditation because then we are sort of creating a karmic account with them. So just give it to the divine and let the divine being do the work, the supreme being, because he is the ever benevolent and he is the almighty. So he can do which I even can't do. And again, to serve the mind, uh, sorry, to serve through my mind, I need a very stable mind. That's what Didi mentioned. A wavering mind, a mind which is wandering all the time, will not be able to connect with God. Because even I won't be empowered, forget empowering others. 
So let me first try to develop that stability to practice serving through the mind. And I have five more minutes. I hope Brother Yogesh would have joined now. So let's go on to what Didi also mentioned. We had Brahma Kumaris very categorically mentioned this about the two faculties of the soul, the mind and the intellect. So let's cleanse our mind, try to get rid of the dirt, the waste which it has, and let the intellect be clear, let there be clarity. We have covered this value in the past. I remember Asha Didi and Charlie Bhai had covered it in great details. Let my intellect be so clear that when I make any decision, I just don't have any doubt, oh, is this decision right or wrong? So I have to have that clarity of the intellect. And that can only happen when it's stable. Didi said, also take God's love and heal yourself and the entire world. And please don't carry sorrow. That's what she said. Because again, if a mind is sad, it can't serve. And she reminded here of Dadi Janki's story that she used to always tell them that don't ever lose your happiness for anything. Because if you are a spiritual instrument, God's instrument, you cannot afford to be sorrowful or sad. Because otherwise you won't radiate happiness. And be a lighthouse, that's what she mentioned. These are a few quotes. Didi said we have to be very stable in our own awareness and consciousness. That's what we have been practicing in the last hour. To be able to go through all the upheavals and say it's okay. We understand what's happening. And the second quote is, stability comes first from the awareness of who I am. And the second aspect is, whom do I belong to? If all of you know, Dadi Janki used to say this, Om Shanti thrice. The first one being, I am this powerful soul. Second is, who am I connected to? Who do I belong to? And the third is, what is my purpose of my existence here? What have I come to do in this spiritual life? So with this, I have a few more minutes. I'll try to see how much questions we can cover. So first one I've already covered that don't focus on any one individual and create a personal connection, trying to do Mansa Seva. <clears throat> Just give it a few thoughts in the first one or two minutes of your meditation and then surrender to the divine. People ask that I'm very stable at work, but people treat me like a doormat. And then they just sort of shove everything onto me, their workload. So Didi said, no, you need to really make sure there's difference between stability and spiritual authority. So don't let people take you for granted. Try to be stable, but again, in a very rightful way, tell them that you're not supposed to, or you're not doing extra work for them in a gentle way though. Getting up at 5 a.m., 4 a.m., it's a very common question for spiritual seekers who have started their journey because it can be very tough to get up at 4 a.m. So Didi said, yes, that's the most important time, 4 a.m., we should be able to get up, but see what suits you. But obviously that's more important because the advantage the quality of yoga would be obviously better at 4 a.m. That's the time <clears throat> also mentioned everywhere in the holy scriptures, Amrit Vela, what we call in Hindi. There were a few questions about how do I serve when I have limited funds because I am keeping it reserved for my child's education. So Didi said, if you can look at the last uh, bold line, do not make it a desire to serve. See what you can do. And there are many other priorities in life we have because we are in a family. Our most important priority, the Almighty says, is my family, my immediate Lokic family where I am. So I have to really be mindful of what my expenses are and how do I need to sort of streamline towards their care first. First is theirs because I'm in that family. And then there are many other ways to serve as well. It's not only through means of money. What we say in Hindi, tan mandhan. Tan is your body, you can use it. What we call karmana seva. Mind, you can serve through the mind. We discuss that and obviously through wealth as well. I think I'll stop here because my time is up. I'll stop sharing the screen. And I hope Brother Yogesh is with us. Is he around? If you can please spotlight him, Sister Anu. He is. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. There is an angel coming up. Thank you from Turkey all the way. Thank you. 
Okay, before I give it to you, Brother Yogesh, I have to introduce you, as always, in the form of a poem. So, Brother Yogesh is not new for us, but there are many new. Today, I'll tell you, we have broken the record. There are almost 150 people. It's the first time. So, I think a big thanks to you. People want to hear you. And Brother Yogesh serves in Turkey, and he's very much uh, <clears throat> into Brahma Kumari since more than 20, 25 years now. And uh, I think I may be wrong if I'm saying that, but it's ages now he's practicing Raj Yoga meditation. Born in Africa, Malawi, and has been brought up in London and Oxford. And he is a personal development trainer and a workshop facilitator as well. He's conducted many seminars, workshops, and courses for all sorts of organizations all over the world, I must say. And a few topics which you all want to hear is like stress-free living, decision-making, emotional intelligence. And he's been with us for many, many uh, workshops as well. And a few lines today for him and stability. That today, Brother Yogesh shall share in chaos how to remain stable so that for the people around, we can be more dependable. For those who have lost hope, let's be the one who's reliable. And in this ever-changing scenario, the one who's very durable. In this world where there's difference and prejudice of being racial, God descends and tells us the secrets of world cycle as a fable, as a story. He teaches us how to connect with him through meditation as a cable, which gives us a chance to dive within and look at our false label, which we need to get rid of actually. Being caught up in our false identity makes me really feel unstable, as if standing shaky on a unipod rather than a table. So with this, I would... Thank you so much, Brother Yogesh, for joining, and it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Manoj. As always, you come up with the lines, and I think we should have one hour of you with your poetry and five minutes of me you know, with my talking. <laughs> yeah. So I know last week, uh, as you were seeing uh, the DJNT we're sharing on this topic. So um, there's not much more I can add that she has gone into the depths of the topic, as you would expect. But uh, what I can do is just share some thoughts and ideas from my own experiences, my own perspective. And also I have a few slides to show you to try to make the presentation a bit more illustrative. So stability is certainly one of the buzzwords of the moment uh, because we live in a world that's very unstable. Uh, you can see that economically, environmentally, politically, uh, and also you see it in you know, in the conflicts, the newer and newer conflicts that are happening in around the world, especially in the region where I am. And so what to do when you are surrounded by so much instability? How and where can you find some stability? Why to be stable? Well, let's look at some very simple examples. Um, those of you who are seated on the chair are seated and you feel comfortable being there. But you can only be comfortable on your chair if that chair is stable. And it can only be stable if it is balanced. So balance is this starting point. If the four legs of the chair are the same size and the chair is in balance, result, the chair is stable. And if it's stable, you feel comfortable. And when something is comfortable, then you can remain sitting there 
for quite some time. In other words, the result is sustainability. And so we have to explore some of these ideas of how stability is rooted in balance. Balance in my own relationship with myself, my relationship with others, and my relationship with life and also with the divine. Let's look at where to go in order to find some sense of stability in this world of chaos that we find ourselves in. So I'd like to share one or two slides here. You just give me a moment. <laughs> so here's an image which uh, probably you'd have seen. Let's say a satellite image of a, of a big storm, hurricane. And these things are huge. They can be larger than some countries. And when you're visited by a storm like this, there's not much you can do. But as you can also see, at the very center of that storm, there is a relatively calm place, which we call as the eye of the storm. It's the only place where you can be in order to experience some calm in the storm. And this is a good metaphor for life for all of us, that when we are faced with chaos, we are faced with rapidly changing scenarios around us, when there is instability in our lives, then there is a place in, for me to go to in order to be stable and to learn to work from and live from there. Storms are events which may come suddenly without warning. Storms can cause some damage, but also storms come and storms go. So using this idea, let's have a look at where we can go to in order to deal with the storms or the winds of change, which creates instability in our experience of life. So we see here that sometimes there can be sudden changes causing instability in your or physical health situation. And as a result, you may find you're unable to do or to travel the way that you used to. It creates some kind of chaos in your routine. There could be some storms or instability in your family. Perhaps a family member who you're used to depending upon as a helper, as a right hand is no longer there or no longer available. And so you have to adjust to that new reality. There may be instability or changes in your job. And you may find that the, your financial condition is impacted. You're not able to live to the standards that you used to. So it creates further instability in in your, your finances, your lifestyle. And furthermore, there could be causes of instability in your local community, in the nation, and of course, in the world at large. And so we live in times of great change and times of great instability. And there is much stress and anxiety connected to living in such an uncertain and unstable world. But what we are learning in our spiritual study is do not try to control those winds of change, but rather go to the very center of that storm, and that is work on yourself. Know 
yourself live from the self. When we begin to do that, we find that not only are we better able to navigate those forms of instability coming in in the guise of sudden change, but also our stability can have an impact upon those changeable factors around us. As we begin to explore what the self is, the inner world is, we realize that life in fact happens from inside to outside, not outside to inside. Now, generally the way we tend to live is this, that when circumstances are to my liking, when people's behavior is as per my desire, then I'll feel stable, I'll feel happy, I'll be content. But that's very temporary because situations and people are always going to change and are not in our hands. But the inside out lifestyle is I learn how to take care of my inner world. I learn how to use my thought energy wisely. I learn to have the right and healthy attitudes towards life. And from that place, I then interact with the world around me. So it's a, it's a sea shift. It's a big change in the way that we are relating to life, to the world around us. And this next model here is promoting this idea that if I want stability in my life, in my circumstances, in my relationships, in my actions, in my words, then the place to start with is with my own thoughts. And this meditation life, this yogi life, is very much centered around this whole idea that your thoughts are your most precious asset. Your thoughts are the currency of your life. And we need to pay as much attention to our thoughts as we may do to our physical health or to our financial condition. When I improve the quality of my thoughts, everything, everything in my life will necessarily upgrade. Now, I remember when I was a child, uh, somebody said to me, one of our meditation teachers said something very pertinent. And he said that the way to deal with any adverse situation is to first stabilize yourself in your swaman. First stabilize yourself in your self-respect, your self-honor, your self-regard. Be stable in that divine and sacred space inside yourself and then look at problem, the situation, the circumstance in front of you. Do not immediately start trying to solve a problem. But first, solve yourself. And solve yourself means get into the right consciousness first, stabilize your mind. And then when you see the problem, when you see the situation, it will no longer give you any fear. You will not be afraid of it. This is something to really practice very deeply because we tend to have the habit of immediately launching ourselves into thinking about situations, thinking about people, without first stabilizing our mind in our self-dignity and self-honor. Here's a little image which 
we call as the theory of relativity. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's look here at um, figure number one, on the left. Here is you. And next to you is some kind of problem. Could be anything, person, a situation, finances, anything at all. And so as we see in figure number one, the problem is bigger than you. And as a result, you may feel some fear, some anxiety, some nervousness, some stress. But when we come to figure number two here, the problem is the same size, but you are bigger than the problem. What has changed? The problem, the situation has not changed. It is the same. But the only thing which has changed is you have changed. You have now become bigger. You have become stronger. You have become more than what you were before. And therefore, for you, this is still a problem, but it's not a big problem. You see the situation and you have this phrase as, um, again, Nadi Janki's name has been mentioned. She used to say, Kya badi baat hai? What's the big deal? What's the big issue? <laughs> it's certainly my experience that I may have approached her with some issue which was bugging me, consuming me. And I related to her, here is the situation. You are bigger than the problem. You, you are life. The problem is a situation. So when we become problem conscious, we create instability in our thoughts and our emotions. And the result is stress. In order to debunk that, let me get into this way of thinking, this paradigm of operating. And first of all, no matter what happens, let me come to the stable place within my own self. Just remind myself that my peace of mind and my happiness are my personal property, non-negotiable, full stop. Being in this awareness is what enables us to grow and become bigger than the problem outside. And in fact, after doing this a few times, you no longer see the problem as a problem, you begin to see it as a form of entertainment. It begins to feel like a game. It no longer causes you to feel emotionally unstable. In fact, the more stable you become mentally and emotionally, wherever you go, you're able to bring stability into the environment in which you are. You become a lighthouse of stability because your own mind is very still, very serene, and you feel very safe. What else do we need to remove from our minds in order to really get to the roots of instability? One of the causes of emotional instability the mood swings, the emotional roller coaster, which is a feature of life in the world today. One of the causes of this is the futile pursuit of desires. When the mind creates a desire for something and we run after it, then there'll always be instability and a sense of insecurity. We live in a world in which 
marketing and selling things is one of the highest paying industries. And so we are constantly bombarded with images to create desires in our minds. Let's see how this works. Let's look at a little equation here to understand the inside story of desire. So this is much more simple than it looks actually. <coughs> What's it telling us? Let's look at the sentence at the top. So I don't get what I want. The result, I feel disappointed. Sentence below, I get what I don't want, or sometimes who I don't want, and the result is stress. So we're saying here the getting or the not getting, let's call that A, the wanting or the not wanting, let's call that B, and the way you feel, let's call that C in both cases, A, B, and C. So what we would like to do is to change C. We don't want to feel disappointment. We don't want to experience stress. So what can we do in order to overcome disappointment and stress? Well, let's look at the equation. I don't get what I want, and I get what I don't want. Should I work on dealing with A, the getting part, or should I work with dealing with B? Now, generally speaking, for most people in the world, we tend to focus upon A. We tend to focus upon the getting part. And we tend to think that when I get what I want, then I will be happy, secure, stable. My life will be okay. And so we are encouraged to chase after the getting part. Work hard to get what you want. So all the emphasis, the energy, the work goes into getting. And that we can call as the the kind of materialistic approach to life, getting. And getting is not just about physical objects or property or possessions. It can also be for emotional desires. You may want to get respect, to get attention, to get recognition. But what spirituality is telling us is do not focus upon the getting part, but focus upon the wanting part. And ask yourself, whatever it is you want, why do you want what you want? What is this wanting business to do with? What is the story behind wanting? And that's where we really get to the roots of instability and remove them from our consciousness. As long as I want something, especially I want something from someone, there will be instability and there'll be some kind of pain. Because you may get one day, tomorrow you may not get. Simply put, it sounds a bit rough to say, but if you want something from someone, then prepare to suffer. Sorry to be so blunt, but it's just, it's just a fact. So in our study of Raja Yoga, we are beginning to explore, what do I want? I feel unstable in this situation or the way somebody behaved towards me caused me to feel unstable. What do I want from this person? 
which I'm not receiving, which is the cause of my instability. And so there we are stepping back from this desire mode to understand what's going on behind here. Let's probe a little bit deeper into understanding what is the story of desires. So here we are. This is telling us about uh, two main types of desire that we may have. <coughs> and so on the right hand side are what uh, we describe as our temporary desires. The things that we generally seem to run after in daily life. And sometimes this running after is conscious, is obvious, but a lot of the time it is subconscious and we don't even realize we have these desires. So as you can see in the lift here, in the list, there may be the desire to be praised or recognized in some way. I may have a desire for my, for prestige, to be honored in some way, to be respected as being a Mr. or Miss So-and-so. I have achieved such and such. And my prestige must be upheld. And then there may be these other desires for so-called possessions or objects. Desire for certain types of property and power and status and name and so on. And then the list of the desires starting with A. <clears throat> there are, of course, many, many. But they may be the desire to have, to be receiving attention from an individual or from a group of people. And I may come into all kinds of weird behaviors in order to draw attention to myself. I may work very hard do a lot, but I don't feel appreciated. So underneath that, I desire some appreciation from others. Maybe there's desires to be acknowledged for what I do, further desires for acceptance and admiration, and the list goes on. It's endless. Chasing after these temporary desires is like chasing your shadow you can never catch it. It'll always run away from you. The result of this is mental and emotional exhaustion, trying to fulfill these desires. It causes a lot of chaos inside a person, a lot of instability and insecurity. So what spirituality tells us is do not chase after your shadow, but turn around and walk in the opposite direction and your shadow will follow you. And that means go for the eternal desires, which we see here on our left. <clears throat> eternal desires are what deep, deep down the soul really is looking for. And here are some of them the desire for peace, for love, for happiness, for self-respect. And if you analyze it very closely, you will find that behind every temporary desire, there is an eternal desire. So if I take the example of appreciation, let's say I work very hard, I really put a lot of effort into doing things, Nobody seems to appreciate me. Nobody says thank you. And one day I've had enough and I say I quit because I don't feel appreciated around here. So when I say I don't feel appreciated, <coughs> what I'm really saying is I don't feel loved. 
High initiation is the need to feel loved. Then all of these temporary desires, we can call them as our wants. The eternal desires, we can call as our needs. And so what this is telling us is focus on the needs, do not focus on the wants. Do not chase after the wants, you will never be satisfied. But rather, the needs are already inside you. That's the good news. These needs, these seeds of peace, joy, love, etc., they already exist within every soul. But those seeds, of course, need to be watered. And when we water those seeds, they germinate, they emerge, and they fill our consciousness. The more full you are of peace and love and self-respect and so on, the more stable you automatically become. When we say somebody is a stable person, what does it mean? Essentially, it means that the peace, the love, the joy, the self-respect in that person has been activated. And therefore, if you criticize him, if he fails at something, he can manage. It doesn't bother him. He doesn't get angry, doesn't get upset, doesn't lose hope in himself. But when we say that somebody is a bit fragile, emotionally fragile or unstable, it means that peace, that love, that joy is in low amount. Therefore, we need to treat that person with a lot of love, a lot of kindness, with kid gloves, because he or she may get upset very easily. So then, how to feed these seeds? How to enable these seeds to germinate in our practical lives? <coughs> well, of course, meditation is a big part of it, and you've heard a lot about that already. But in addition, this meditation of Raj Yoga meditation, it's not just about sitting down and practicing meditation, but it is a living and organic practice, which means as I pass through the day-to-day -day life, can I remain in that natural meditative state? Even when I'm working, I'm conversing, I'm traveling, I'm doing my job. Can I raise my consciousness even as I'm going about my daily life so that externally I'm doing my job, I'm fulfilling my responsibility, but internally I continue to feed my consciousness. And so for that, we need to explore a little bit about our relationship with our personal life. So I'd like to show you another little diagram here now. Let's see if I can bring this up. Just stay with me a moment. Second, please. Okay, so let's, uh, let's have a look here. I think you can see this. <sighs> So it's telling us here that there are two conditions 
that uh, we can encounter in our lives with regard to how we are uh, going about our daily life. So the one at the top, condition chaos, is telling us that here are some of the main areas in our daily lives in which we use our time and our energy. So for example, there is our family, there is our work, there is study, uh, there are taking time with our friends, uh, some leisure activities, and maybe some others. And what we tend to do is we tend to jump from one to the other to the other. So now here I am with my family. Now I have to go to work. And then I have to be with my friends. It's somebody's birthday, somebody's wedding. Then there is some study I'm doing, some evening course. I need to take care of that. Then there may be some leisure activities. Then back to work again. And then back to family, et cetera, et cetera. And we tend to be jumping around from one to the other to the other. And it's a bit like a monkey jumping around in the branches of a tree. And after a while, this will get rather tiring for the mind. It will lead to some exhaustion and perhaps to some burnout and stress. And one may wonder, I'm doing all of these things, but I just feel tired, emotionally drained. The model we'd like to suggest is this one below, where you still have all of those various factors in your life. You take care of your family, your work, your study, friends, leisure, etc. But you are at the very center of your life. Here I am. I am at the very center of my life. And from this position, from this vantage point, do your work, do it well, do the best you can, excel in whatever you can do. But do not lose yourself. Always return back to yourself. And always remember, I do a job, but I am not a job. From here, take care of your family. Fulfill your roles, your responsibilities. But again, do not lose yourself in your family roles. So even those roles we have, mother, father, husband, wife, son, daughter, etc., they are roles. And in fact, I am not the roles I play in my life. It's the same with all of these other areas of your life, your friends, your leisure, study, and many others. Live your life, but always learn to return to yourself. And that means living in true awareness of my deepest and eternal identity. That's what we call in this study as living in soul consciousness. There is what I am, there is what I do, and there is what I have. But today, largely speaking, everyone is lost in what I do and what I have. The result of identifying with what I do, and what I have, is we give birth to something called ego. And ego is a slimy, slippery, shape-shifting creature, which is responsible for all the suffering that the world experiences. As long as ego exists, there will always be some form of instability in my mind and my emotions. 
if we learn to step out of those ego phases, I'm not what I do, I'm not what I have, but I am this spiritual energy. I am the peaceful soul, the loveful soul, the powerful soul. If I practice living in that awareness, my stability and my sense of security will come from inside me. Now, it's a very natural tendency that whenever you feel unstable and insecure, you know, you try to hold on to something to make yourself feel more secure. Take the simple example of walking along an icy road in the winter. If you slip and you find yourself falling, instinctively your hand will come out to grab something or even someone who may be passing by without thinking. The instinct to want to feel safe, secure and stable is very deep. So just imagine if we do that physically with our hands and our arms, how much more do we do that with our thoughts? We hold on to situations, people, roles, abilities, talents, reputation to make myself feel stable, safe, and secure. But all of those things which are outside of me are changeable. And if I am emotionally, mentally holding on to something which is unstable, at some point, when it collapses, I also will experience that instability. So how to let go of holding on to those temporary supports of the mind? It's only by stepping into that which is eternal and unchanging. And that we call as our spiritual identity going deep into the experience of what it means to live as an eternal energy, as an eternal soul. Here's another graphic to help to explain this. So this is about awareness. So again, it's actually more simple than it looks here. It's telling us that at the bottom of the picture here is the condition of limited awareness, which is pretty much how everyone lives today. Limited awareness is where I don't know who I am. I'm lost in my roles, my labels, my job, my you know, my own family, my surroundings, my nationality, and lost in the world of you know, politics or sport or whatever it might be. But here, I don't really know who I am beyond my physical identity, my name, my age, my family, etc. When we live in this condition of limited awareness, we will necessarily feel insecure and unstable. The mind feels a little bit lost. And as I mentioned earlier, when you feel insecure and unstable, then we develop the habit of holding on to things. And as we get used to living in the state of holding on to something with our mind, we create a dependency. And as that dependency becomes deeper, it turns out to be an attachment. Where there are mental and emotional attachments, there will always be some kind of angst, some kind of sorrow or suffering. So that's how we live today. The condition of the human race is locked into limited awareness. The place we want to be 
is at the other end of this graphic. <clears throat> we want to live in unlimited awareness. And when we are there in unlimited awareness, we feel very secure. Secure, stable, safe. I put these three words together. And when you feel that, then quite naturally and automatically, and without any force, the mind begins to let go. And when you let go, you feel free. When you feel free, that is the basis, the prerequisite for real happiness. Most of you know this phrase, chodo to chudo, let go and be free. But how to go from limited awareness to unlimited awareness? For this, we need the fuel of spiritual knowledge, which takes our awareness into the unlimited. Spiritual knowledge is the essential ingredient which allows us to really build strength into our own selves. Now, there are so many aspects of spiritual knowledge for us to work with and to live with, but in terms of security and stability, one very simple one, which I'd like to mention, and uh, it's very powerful, three simple words, the three words I have found very powerful and very stabilizing are these, that nothing is mine. Nothing is mine. Now, if this is new to you, just you know, drop that into your intellect. And just allow it to percolate for a few days. Nothing is mine, which means I can lose nothing. If nothing is mine, it means I can lose nothing. And if I can lose nothing, that becomes the basis of my security and my stability. So all anxiety, fear, tension is based upon the fear of losing something. So when we take our awareness into the unlimited and eternal, by living in this awareness, nothing is mine. Just see the effect it has upon you emotionally. You feel safe, stable, secure, strong, serene, very still because there is no fear, no more anxiety inside. That's all a little bit about inner stability and inner security and how we see the world. Let me just touch on one more thing, which is also a very big part of our lives, and that is our relationships how to bring greater stability into our relationships with each other. It's a huge area because as human beings, you know, we do enter into personal relationships, family relationships, work relationships. And if we live in cities, we, can't, we cannot avoid people. But yet, no matter how close you are to someone, there is still a formula, there is still a balance to be struck if I want that relationship to be stable. So what is the formula, the basic formula for stability in human relationships? Um, this is something I think everybody would have heard of before. I'd just like to show it in the form of this graphic here. So basic formula for stable relationships. And so this is showing us the, the seesaw. And on one side, we have being loving and we all like and we all need to feel loved. 
and also to express love. But often we forget that there is a counterbalance which keeps that love pure and clean, and that is being detached. Now, what happens when the love goes into an extreme, when love goes out of balance and becomes corrupted, then that love will change into possession. This is where we try to control uh, the behavior of some other person. And we may put pressure on them to behave according to how we want them to be, how we want them to speak, how we want them to talk to us. We may make certain demands. We may find uh, attachments developing and dependencies. And if that individual behaves with others the way I'd like them to behave with myself, it may generate this thing called jealousy. And it goes on and on and on. And all of these are, of course, uh, very difficult experiences to have. And you're feeling these kinds of emotions. But this is love out of balance. This is unstable love. Love gone wrong. Love corrupted. And so ups and downs, ups and downs in emotions because the love is not in balance. So what is needed, as you see here, is this love must be balanced with being detached. And detachment actually protects the quality of the love. But yet, if we go into extremes of being detached, then we can come across as being a little bit cold, a little bit distant, a little bit formal or aloof and uncaring. Extremes of anything are not good. Even extremes of qualities eventually become a storm. So if we want stability and balance in our lives, we need to explore this whole set of virtues to see which one is balanced with which one and have I got this balance right? Where there is too much love, dependency, attachment, and it makes you very weak as a person. Where there's too much detachment, then somebody is talking to you, it feels like having a conversation with a fridge. You get a blast of cold air and a strange mechanical sound. <laughs> and that's no fun either. And so I have found, you know, over the years, this is a lifelong work in progress, continuing to refine, to refine this balance of being detached and loving in all our relationships. Even the person who may be the closest to you, maybe you live with or you work with, it's still another soul. It's still another human being. When this balance is lost, when this love goes into an extreme, one of the indications is we lose respect for the individuality of the other. And we begin to form expectations of how I wish the other to behave. And then, of course, there's a, you know, a tit for tat. They then react in a certain way and I react back and they react back. And it's no longer fun anymore. So detached and loving, detached and loving by being aware of the spiritual reality. That I am a unique spiritual individual soul. And the other also is another soul on their own journey in this grand theater of life. Okay, so I need to stop there and uh, just invite the wonderful Dr. Manoj to okay. re-enter the room. 
Thank you so much. We just thoroughly enjoy your sharing. We love the way you share. You get all those small things and show us, and they are so effective and meaningful. Those small, small snippets they just carry on in our in our brains forever, in our conscious mind. Thank you so much, and we always love the way you these things. And I think the right value goes to the right person. You're really so stable. You're shared with so much of stability. Vibrations, we can feel that. Okay, so we don't have time for questions because we have actually overshot our time, but that's perfectly fine. And now I'll request Dr. Ashok Mehta to please propose the vote of thanks. Over to you. Thank you. Yogesh Bhai, I feel that you should continue to speak and we just keep on being absorbed in your talk. I think what you're teaching us is a life made easy. If you want to be uh, happy, attend classes by Professor Yogesh. I think, <laughs> I think this is a, you know, we used to study in the schools and colleges, physics made easy, chemistry made easy. I think uh, spirituality made easy is your, your forte. Loved each and every word you have said, especially your diagrammatic present representation, they will ever be in our memory. So my memory is a little poor, but I think I can still carry all that you have said today. So thank you very much. We just love, appreciate, and adore you. Thank you. Aung thank you, Shukma. Your, your blessings are very precious for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, both of you. And I'll just quickly share the screen and I'll be ready with the jobs you have to do. You know that. Oops, again, my system. I'll just, uh, yeah. So as always, uh, we just want to let you all know that for Brahma Kumaris, this month is very special. Uh, the Avyakta month, we call, we all of us work on ourselves. And it's again, work in progress. We cannot keep, cannot keep saying that again and again. But we really need to finally... Uh, make ourselves complete. So I'll just share the screen and show you what's the next value which we have chosen for this next month. We still have almost half, more than half a month to go. So we have with us our very Dr. Ashok Mehta next time. He'll be conversing with our very dear sister, Dr. Jena, and he's joining us from Washington. And the value would be regularity because we purposely chose Dr. Mehta because he's very regular in whatever he does, be it surgery, be his clinical practice, or be his spiritual effort as well. So it will be a good conversation. Please join. It will be next week, Saturday, coming together, same time. And then we have with us, it always happens, Yogesh Bhai, this is really a very divine coincidence. It's not put up that you always are after Gopi Patel or Gopis before you. Something like that always happens. So it's just divine. And she'll be joining us from India again. It will be a week after that, 27 January. We'll listen to her wisdom as well. And then we are fortunate that this month we have two silence retreats. So we'll be having the next one on regularity following the workshop on regularity. And this is our elegant calendar, which Sister Kosha always does it for us. Thank you so much. Uh, and we will we will be actually emailing you as this. I'm sure we are receiving many. You'll have, you'll be receiving emails as well. And today we have, as I said, our record has been broken. I'm saying it again and again because uh, we have, you'll have sent us many more emails and numbers as well. So thank you so much for participating. And please give us your comments and feedback in whatever way we can improvise on the series workshops as well. So with this, I'll just stop sharing the screen and over to Sister Anu for the photograph as well yeah yeah we don't want to miss the photograph with uh, brother yogesh so such beautiful sharing brother yogesh i'm sure everybody's tapping onto that you know stability <laughs> and feeling happy so open your videos if you want to be in the photograph so that we can uh, keep it in our memory forever this moment yeah uh, another few seconds if you want to open your videos yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the knowledge. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. So let's move on into meditation mode. You want to have some drishti or some commentary, whatever you like, Brother Yogesh. Over to you. I think I've spoken enough. So maybe just some <laughs> some drishti only sure, would be sure. okay.
Thank you once again to all the participants and even a big thanks to Pradeo Yogesh. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. See you again soon. Thank you.